Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is a continuation from last time in which we are making a nuclear explosion visual effect. Last time we discussed the animation, this time we are going to discuss the shading. So let's start. So here we in Blender. This is basically the setup that we have done last time. And I think the last time the tutorial was recorded in 3.0, but now I'm in 3.1 beta. And uh, since I'm using all this kind of node linking, so some of the nodes are updating themselves according to the library that I'm linking to. So these kind of nodes may not look exactly the same as you've seen from last tutorial, but uh, these are less relevant because we're not going to talk about geometry node tree mostly. We're more going to talk about this kind of material. Okay. So before we actually discuss the material, let's just uh, add all this kind of material. So I need a top. I need a middle, I need a button. Uh, you may wonder why can't I use the same for all of them? Because they're not going to use the same attributes or noises. Okay, so here let's take a top, let's take a middle, let's take a button. Okay, so I added three materials. Once we have added all these kind of three materials, uh, let's move on to outputting the attributes. Okay, so what I would like to do is to output uh, the texture which is used to displace all this kind of geometry. Okay, so basically I'm expecting uh, expecting that all this kind of bulging parts to have this kind of white color. And just to remind you that we're using the Voronoi 3D, which is essentially just the Voronoi texture, okay, to give this kind of result. Uh, so within this normal displacement, there is a set position. Now. Okay, just a kind of idea. Here you may think, since we're going to use this value, then we just output this value to the group output. Okay, we can definitely do that, and uh, let's just name this value as top. So within the shader editor, so let's go to the top material we're going to switch the principal BSDF into the emission shader. And finally use the attributes, which is top. The top is a factor. So let's just uh, add a color ramp. Uh, this is not giving me color ramp. Color ramp. Yes, it gives me a color ramp. And finally output that, that into the color. And go to the material preview mode that we can see this texture. And you can then manipulate, for example, whitish part should be whitish. The black part should be dark, yellow, kind of stuff. And then we are having, uh, for example, dark, whatever stuff. And let's change that to constant. Okay. Uh, this is just kind of idea. It's not necessary to follow exactly. Let's just name them as so just to get a kind of idea and you turn on this balloon and increase the strength, you have whatever effect, okay? But here's a, one kind of issue I want to remind you that uh, because this is field, so this value and this value are not really the same, okay? So this is a kindly warning to you, okay? This is very important uh, to prove my theory, so we can try with capture attribute. And if I capture this value and use this capture the value to replace the older value, then you will actually see the difference between these two texture. Okay. But uh, why is that happening? The reason is that within this Voronoi 3D, we're essentially using the Voronoi texture. Uh, using the Voronoi texture, which means we're using this vector which is basically a position attribute that we input. Okay. I've explained in field tutorial that all this kind of attribute node does not contain any information. The information essentially is pulling out from the geometry, which also means that if we directly output this uh, value or this distance to the group input, it's using the geometry data at the end after you joining or other things, okay? 
But at this specific moment when we are trying to set the position to do the normal displacement, we are using the position value here. Okay. So the position value of these two linkage are not the same, so their outputs are not the same. Okay. So this is kind of interesting thing. So depending on your needs, you may want to capture or not capture it. Just to warn you. In this case, I probably think this is good enough. We do not need to worry anything else. But just you know. Okay. So now we're using the attributes in the shader from the node tree. That's why if we just play this animation, you can see this kind of noise is being animated as well because we were animating all this kind of noise previously. So you do not need to do any extra things within the shader nodes. Everything is already being done previously. Okay. So next we are going to do the button because it's basically the same principle. Uh, we are going to output the attributes which leads to the deformation. So initially it's kind of a torus, but uh, then we normal displacement twice with the Voronoi texture, which is within the Voronoi 3D, we end up the shape like this. Okay. So it's possible that you directly output the attributes into the another socket, so another attribute, but you can also join attributes together. Okay. It, it finally depends on which one you like because sometimes you need to think about an issue that the more attributes you output, the more data block you actually write to each of these vertices. So it may slow down your performance very much. So this is a kind of issue. But on the other hand, we have a node of join geometry, but it seems like we do not have a node which is called a join, uh, join attribute. We do not have such a node. We do have a join stream, but that's another story. So how can we actually join attribute? It's actually the same as join geometry. Or on the other hand, the join geometry automatically join attribute. Because when you see all this kind of dashed line, the information are actually stored within geometry blocks. Okay. So they are already being joined at this stage. Okay. Uh, just to give you a kind of example. So if you take a math node, okay, and if I directly add the noise, let's take this several noise, and you can see they are being added together. Okay. Uh, let's use the same texture as the top. So you can see this is the current result that we are seeing. However, if I try to capture this attribute so that I this values is not applied to the, all the geometry being joined at the end, but only applied to the, this specific geometry, the third geometry, which is the button, then this math node addition will be just used for joining attributes. So this is the concept. This, this is just a kind of idea, okay? So that we are trying to output as few attributes as possible. We are trying to boost up the performance in such a kind of case. Otherwise, there are so many, so many vertices to write on this kind of attribute since we are subdividing that a lot. Here you may realize the necessity previously for me to generate three different materials because even if we're using the same attribute as a top, but the color ramp data will not be the, really the same. So I'm just going to switch this to button. Before I switch the button, I'm going to copy and paste the data into the button. Okay. So let's use the the same setup, but just to change the color ramp a little bit. Okay. So as long as you get a kind of idea, this will just be fine. Of course, finally, it's kind of a tricky decision where you capture attributes, which deformation you really use. Uh, theoretically speaking, I think I should have attributes here instead of there. So basically before all this kind of deformation, so it becomes more accurate. Another thing I would like to do is I want to have all these kind of colors on the top. Okay. So here we're going to do a tradition shader to RGB, which is the basic concept of a stylized uh, shader. 
So we need a diffuse. Yes, yeah. And then we also need a colorant. Let's turn that into constants and we can view these colors. It's affected by the light, so we let's add a area light and let's go to render view. So within this, let's just add a 1000 so you can actually see how it's affecting. Now we are going to turn off the material of our middle so that it does not really reflect the light and thus having the balloon effect. Okay. So now if you increase uh seems not really working. <laughs> so now if you're trying to increase the the lights sides or other things, then it will change how the shading uh the the shade you will change the shading as well. So in this case, let's take a color wrap and uh, just a lock on this kind of interface. So then you just change all this kind of settings, the scale of your objects or the, your lights or other things. Then it will just be fine. Let's take the emission shader. Seems kind of okay. Hmm. I think this is fine. Let's take a uh, three, uh, four thousand. You can also turn on contact shadow, which may potentially add some details. Can I actually turn on this ambient occlusion? Uh, I think it's no effect. So you can try to play around with this kind of value. At the end, what you can do is to add the shaders together. Or you can mix RGB to add the colors. I probably think that this did not really change anything. But the whole point that we're trying to do this is that I have both a I have more color on the top due to this light, and I also have the color from noise. So it's it's just the kind of idea you can play around with it uh, as you wish, just kind of whatever. Uh, one issue that you need to know is when you are casting shadows for this kind of light, you probably uh, you want to turn off the cast the shadow properties on the other object so that uh, they do not block the light. So within shadow mode, let's just uh, turn on that known. Can you see the difference? Probably not very obvious. But yeah, anyway, are we in render view? Yes. Okay, so th this is just kind of idea. You can try to play around with all this kind of value until you see this effect. So now we're on top, right? So now we do not see anything because it's being blocked. Yeah, so now we see. Because all this kind of shader is affected by the light, so you do not want to cast the shadows, otherwise it will have a blockage. Okay, so we finished the top and the bottom, then we need to work with the middle. To work with the middle, it's kind of very straightforward. So you either displace this mesh, use the set of position or normal displacement again, um, and with the noise texture, output the noise texture with the mass node and so on and so forth. Or you can just use the noise textures within shader. So here I'm just going to output UV. Um, because the way we are constructing UV is to capture the attributes of uh, spawn parameters, as I've explained in UV tutorial. So we do not need to really capture again. But uh, just to make it it is safe. We probably would like to capture the UV again. So it, it depends on you because I do not even really know whether it will have any problem or not. But uh, let's go to the middle. So let's just add the noise section. Okay. So take the attributes and let's add a UV attribute. So UV 
take into the vector and let's look at the factor. Let's take a color ramp and add the emission. Let's turn on this uh, constant. We change the color as uh, we've done previously. So dark colors, kind of uh, yellow colors. Uh, these are something that you can do in your free time. I'm not going to continue doing this. Okay, something like that. And uh, because this is a UV, which is on 2D, so it's just a vector mass, then you're animating it. Uh, let's animate on the x-axis. So this is how you animate that. So there are many ways to do that. You can definitely, as I've mentioned, that you can use the normal displacement and the noise texture to displace and then output the same thing. But these are just kind of idea. Okay. I think this is it. Is there anything that I haven't recovered? Hmm, I forgot. Oh, there is one thing I forgot to mention. That, uh, as I've talked about just recently, about this error, which is caused by the fundamental limitation of a spline parameter. To resolve that, uh, you can just uh, turn on this reset spline side click. Then it will resolve it very easily. Okay, It's just a kind of idea, but it works in this case. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.